Hi, my name is Diana Dashner. I'm a nurse practitioner in Fort Pierce, Florida. And last year I did a poster on lower extremity ulcers and the importance of angiosomes at the Wild on Wounds conference in Las Vegas. So the biggest thing that I took away from doing this poster and presenting it at WOW was that many of our wound care specialists do not know what an angiosome is. So let's begin there with actually what an angiosome is. Let's answer that question. An angiosome is a specific area that an artery supplies blood flow to in the body. Obviously, these are all over the body, but what's most important for the wound care specialist is the lower extremity angiosomes because that's where our arterial issues are mainly going to pop up and cause us issues with our wound healing. When it comes to wound healing of the lower extremity, you have to think time is tissue. It's not as severe a situation as, for example, a heart attack where seconds count. When it comes to a lower extremity, days are a matter. So when you have a patient who has low perfusion to a lower extremity, that's when it really comes into play that if you know the artery that's supplying that blood flow where the wound is at, you can get this patient to the vascular surgeon quicker, heal them up faster, and hopefully prevent them from having any limb loss. This patient is a patient that I saw at the wound care center. She had critical limb ischemia. 88 year old female, she had a non-healing wound on the posterior aspect of her right lower leg. And initially she told us that she didn't know how she did it. She did finally fess up to us that when she was attempting to put on her compression stockings, she put her thumbnail through her leg. That's what initially caused this wound. She did not have any diabetes, but we already knew that she had some peripheral arterial disease. She did not want to go through having another angiogram done initially. So we started her off on some conservative treatment with Santal to help debride the wound, some Hydrofera Blue to help keep down microbial levels, and also put her in a mild compression of Curlex and Coban at 25%. Her treatment began in May. By the time we hit that two month limit of conservative treatment on July 14th, she decided it was time that she found out what was causing this. She was tired of coming to the wound center after two months. She had a lot of comorbidities. So we did refer her to the vascular surgeon who took her in and performed an angiogram. These pictures on the slide are exactly her angiogram. And even though her wound was on the posterior aspect of her lower leg, her angiogram demonstrated to us that she actually had narrowed blockage in her superficial femori femoral artery up in her thigh. Once the drug-coated balloon was put in and she had her angiogram, it reestablished the blow, the, the flow that went all the way down to her lower extremity. So once we were able to establish that flow, it took no time at all to finish healing her up. Okay, so the pictures that are on the left of the screen now, the top is when we initially started her care in May. The below picture on the left is her date of discharge on August 23rd. So on July 14th was when she went, underwent the angioplasty that opened up that SFA artery to reestablish that blood flow to the lower extremity of her leg. The important takeaway here is that even though her wound was on the posterior aspect of the lower extremity, her blockage was all the way up in the SFA in her thigh. So just because you have something down lower doesn't mean that the blockage can't be up higher. So knowing those arteries as they're coming down and what they feed into, how they change their flow is very important in order to heal up these wounds on the lower extremities. The picture that you have there on the right lower is the actual angiosome sock that we use in the wound center. You can see that orange area there is the anterior tibial artery. That's the main flow that comes down into the lower extremity. It covers the entire anterior portion and turns into the dorsalis pedis artery. Looking on that bottom there with the yellow, the anterior tibial artery in that portion of the foot 
goes into the lateral plantar artery. So even though it's a could be potentially a blockage or a narrowing in that anterior tibial artery, it turns into that lateral plantar artery. So knowing that those two flow together, you'd be able to identify which angiosomes are, act, are potentially having an issue for that patient's wound. The purple area is the perineal artery, which turns into, at the heel, the calcaneal branch of the plantar artery. Now, what you can't see is if we were to flip that diagram over of that sock artery on the inner aspect, the medial uh, posterior is the posterior tibial artery that comes down and it transfers into the calcaneal branch of the posterior tibial. So you have two different areas that flow into the calcaneal area. From that, it goes into the medial plantar artery. So if you are looking at the bottom of the foot, what you would actually be looking at is dissected down the center two different named arterial branches that come down into that foot, but they are all coming from either the posterior tibial or the perineal arteries that come down into the lower extremity. I hope this presentation has been helpful and you actually have some takeaways of how the angiosomes can help affect the patient with the lower extremity ulcer and help heal them up quicker by getting them in for vascular intervention.